Hello and welcome to Five Things. I'm Dana Taylor. Every day, nearly 17 U.S. military veterans take their own lives. That number is 20 if you include active duty soldiers. That's according to the VA or Veterans Administration. Since September is National Suicide Prevention Month, we here at USA Today wanted to zoom in on an issue as it relates to brave men and women in our armed forces. Despite the increased awareness of PTSD and other mental illnesses, despite a push by VA hospitals to do more outreach, and offer better mental health care, and despite new technologies that aim to help our vets recover from mental illness, the number of suicides among veterans has stayed tragically high. How can we address this crisis in mental health? Chef Andre Rush is a combat veteran, having served 23 years in the U.S. Army as a master sergeant. He also served as a White House chef for four administrations. Chef, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. Well, Chef, you've been quite outspoken on the issue of suicides in the veteran community. Why has this issue been so compelling for you? And can you please share your personal connection to it? You know, my 11-year-old girl, her five and six-year-old brother was with her stepdad, and he eventually uh, did that to them and then took his own life. And we don't look at it and we don't think about it until it actually happens to us. My best friend, Laz... um, Thanksgiving took his own life as well. And he knew what I did, but sometimes we get into that part where we just think that we can handle things alone. And I was the same exact way. I'm, I'm no exception to the rules. And with USAA, we're doing this. With um, them, it is an absolutely honor. I deal with things each and every day. Uh, and that's the hard truth about it. I have to cope. I'm here in my kitchen. It's part of my coping too. I use cooking as therapy, cooking to cope. I use this as therapy because I know that my message is going to reach out to so many others. I use USAA for therapy, for my therapy to get to other people. Well, PTSD, it's obviously a huge factor in vet suicides. We've been hearing about it for decades. Is the stigma still there for veterans? And if so, how do you think that we can normalize the behavior of us, uh, just people reaching out for help? It's lesson since when I was in. I, I talked about 9-11 and, um, you know, I was in the Pentagon when that happened. I was in radius and it was such a traumatic time. Uh, and I remember this because I was young and I, I, I trained, I worked out with the DOD guys and I knew about PTSD. I knew about mental health. But like I said, it didn't resonate to me. You can talk about things all day, but until it's personal, then it becomes personal. And you're like, okay, when the guys start telling me, these older guys said, hey, chef, I'm getting ready to go get some help. I think you might want to do some of that myself, yourself. And when I went to my chain and they, and I said that to them and they're like, do you like your job? And I was like, I understand, be quiet and keep working. And you have to deal with it. You deal with yourself. And I did. And 20 years later, I was still dealing with it. But then now it was just that ticking time, but it was building up. It was just all of that, all of that that was inside. I was trying to cope as much as I possibly could and trying to ignore it. It was hard. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. Me being back then doing this by myself was extremely hard. I mean, I cried all the time. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to cry for this because it's not meaning that I'm sad or, you know, um, depressed or anything. It means that, man, finally something's being heard. Someone hears your voice. Something is finally being done about something, not only for me, but for other veterans, for the kids. According to America's Warrior Partnership, 40 percent of veterans live in rural areas where it's hard to get to a VA hospital to get any health services, let alone mental health services. But now we all have access to online visits. Did the VA also expand their online mental health offerings? So the VA has expanded their online help. And I'll be very honest and very transparent. The VA is an entity that they answer tens of thousands of calls all the time. Some people say, I called the VA and I didn't get an answer. They didn't call back. They did. And it's true. It's just like if someone calls you and I miss a call, you have to make that first step. And I'm also talking to the family members. The family members, you see them making that step. You have to assist them also. Don't leave them by themselves to handle a situation that's dire like this until it's too late. 
Well, Chef, I know this is something that you know, but it's going to be shocking to a lot of people. In the 20 years from 2001 to 2021, the number of men and women who died by suicide was four times the number killed in combat. Four times. Last year, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin ordered the creation of the Suicide Prevention and Response Independent Review Committee to recommend some changes that might help the Pentagon reduce suicides. The report was released this past March. Can you tell us what some of the recommendations were and if they've been implemented and what the impact has been? Accessibility is everything. You know, if you have a spouse, even for yourself, Make sure your care guard locking up those firearms, putting them away in a safeguard. We're not accessible. Asking those those serious questions about things. Um, looking and looking for little signs that someone changes, someone does this, someone does that. And you can also go and look at the websites and understand if you're, even for yourself, if you have those situations in awareness, PTSD, a military veteran, do it yourself. But family members, friends, do the exact same thing. And I know Secretary, when he went and he said that he implemented it, it's just those little key things where it doesn't have to be astronomical, but those little things like locking it up, putting the key away to hide into another safe key box and put it in this way so you can know and care guard for yourself and make sure that your family's okay. So what's been the most surprising facet of this to you as you've worked to become such an advocate for suicide prevention among the military? That I'm here talking to you. I'm, I think about it. I'm, I'm, I was a, a small kid from Mississippi in the projects, would had absolutely nothing, um, was told I'll be nothing, to being a face, a face to fight, <laughs> you know, for USAA, which I'll be honest with you, uh, one of the most highlighted parts of my career, even with all the TV shows and my books and this and that, this right here, being able to be as a person, you know, and of color, to be this person here in front of you talking about something so astronomical, you know, and unfortunately, the way I got here, with losing my daughter, losing my best friend, losing my soldiers, her losing my brothers, um, it's a lesson to say, don't become complacent, don't take things for granted. Everybody has a purpose and a reason. It's up to you what you do with it and how you do it. You know, that's the most important part I try to tell people is, you know, you look at someone on the exterior, but you never know what's going on in the interior. You should think of everybody as your friend or your family or, or us to being together and not doing that part. But also another thing is just being kind. <laughs> You'll be amazed how far kindness can go. People look at me, I'm a big guy. And when I laugh at them or I smile at them or I make a joke, they literally change instantly. They can look at me like, and then all of a sudden I'll make a joke and it's just like, bam, it's all gone. And I just made their whole entire day of being kind to me. Like, oh my God, you know, and, and that says a lot, but it helps me even more so. We shared a lot of your personal story, um, but I do want to ask you for one more story because I think that our listeners could really benefit from hearing a story about a real life veteran who once saw suicide as the only way out, who then was able to get past that moment and has learned to live with suicidal impulses without acting on them. I don't need a name here. I'm just wondering if you can share an additional story. Well, that person saw it as an out um, and maybe even acted on it to see. Life is short and I say to people, you know, when they say, no one will miss me. No one will miss me. And sometimes people say, don't be selfish. And, you know, I'll say, don't be selfish also. You know why? Because not selfish is you taking your life or doing something or denying the world with what you have or what you could have. I say, think about the impact, the domino effect. Think about your future kids that could go and rule the world, be presidents or these doctors and lawyers or inspire millions of people or, or you know, cure un uncurable diseases. Think about what you deny them and yourself, the greatness, not only just them, but you and what you could contribute to the world. And so I say that about that person, and I'm happy that he's still around and I'm happy that he's able to spread his awareness and be a good person. Okay, so you've been working as an advocate for vets via a nonprofit called Face the Fight. Tell me their approach, what it's been, and why you think investing your time in it is so worthwhile. 
when you have these entities, these huge corporations. And so USAA, you know, along with um, uh, corporations, nonprofit, other other veteran focused, you know, uh, organizations that's focused together. It's OK. Even me as one person. I'm doing it constantly. Now you put me with a, a unstoppable force and we all come together and we're just more and more <laughs> unstoppable and we spread the awareness a thousand times more than one person. It's, it's true what they say, we can do so much more together. They're gonna cut that suicide rate in half by 2030. You know, And that's one thing that I'm gonna stand by, whether I'm right here in front of you or right here by my desk or out anywhere, I'm gonna still spread that word from now until 2030, until like my last breath. And finally, and I know that you've touched on this, but I want this to be the takeaway. If anyone listening is an active duty soldier or a vet who's struggling with suicidal ideation, what are some resources for them to reach out? So first off, uh, like I said, USAA, uh, www.wefacethefight.org. Many resources, they have all the resources, they have extensions to everything that you need to know. Go there, look through it, you know, see who they're supporting, how they're supporting and what they're doing. And, you know, ask the questions, ask the, ask the serious questions, ask the questions, go to the numbers, call. And by all means, just don't pick up the phone once or twice. I've called many times and I still will. The same way I answer people over and over when they say, hey, chef, I need some help. You know, let me get you those resources. Like you, you fought for us. Fight for yourself. Fight for yourself. You're worth it. Thank you so much for your passion on this important issue, Chef, for your time today. Really appreciate that. Appreciate you speaking with me. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. I'm Dana Taylor. I'll see you next time.